So we've been calculating standard deviation and doing those weird like percent of data within one standard deviation without much meaning. So now we're going to interpret that. So the within one, the within two, it tends to always be in the same range. Um, so data within one standard deviation, that was the mean plus or minus the standard deviation, which I'm going to abbreviate. Um, we'll always get between 50 and 80% for most data sets. There's rare occasions where this doesn't happen, but most of the time. And if you go back and look at the example where we did this, it was within 50 to 80%. And then bell-shaped data is really special. We can predict the percent even better. So bell-shaped will always be around 68%. So we'll put in approximately equal. So maybe 67, maybe 69, right? But really close to 68. Um, and then we also did two standard deviations, which was the mean plus or minus two times the standard deviation. And if you go and look back, we were in like the 90s and 100s. And so it turns out that it's actually almost always between 90 and 100%. If you go back and look at our earlier examples, that'll be true. Um, and it turns out for bell-shaped, it's right in the middle at 95. Remember, bell-shaped is when we fit this shape. So if it doesn't fit this shape, it'll be in the 90 to 100 range. But if it is bell-shaped, it should be really close to 95. And then three standard deviations we haven't done yet, but that tends to be where we stop. And the reason we stop at three is we should almost always get 100%. So almost 100% at three. And then for bell-shaped, it's very specific at 99.7. And so we stop at three since we're almost at 100, so four would be 100, five would be 100, so why keep going? Um, and so we'll mess with this in this section. But the idea is within one standard deviation, we get majority, because majority is at least half, if we didn't know that. In everyday language, um, we'll get most of the data within two standard deviations, right? 90 to 100%, I think, would represent most. And then almost all by the time we're at three. And again, that's why we stop at the third, because we have almost all. And we'll kind of use these cutoff points throughout the semester, and they'll have more meaning as we go through the semester. Um, and then the number of standard deviations data is, so the, we're going to measure that in a second, but the more standard deviations a data value is away from the mean, the more unusual or rare it is. Should make sense, right? As we get farther from the mean, it's less likely. And so how are we going to measure that? We're going to use this thing called a z-score to measure that. How do we measure how rare? Just going off that. So that's called the z-score. The z-score is going to be something we are going to use a lot. So this is something, put a star or something. We're gonna, this is going to come up basically for the remainder of the semester. It's not going away. So the z-score represents the number of standard deviations a value is away from the mean. And here's the formula in words. Um, we're gonna do the data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. If you like symbols instead for a population, it would be x minus mu over sigma. And for a sample, it would be x minus x bar over s, right? Data value is x minus the average divide by the standard deviation. Um, I usually just write it in words because then I don't have to worry about sample or population. And then we'll always round these to exactly three. The main uh, reason for that is because people used to use tables, although we're not using tables anymore, but it's just kind of turned into, uh, when I say tables, we use tables instead of calculators. Um, and so it just kind of became the standard. But now that we have calculators, it's not as big of a deal. But it just became the standard. So let's find some z-scores to figure out what's going on. So we have two events. We have, uh, and we want to know which is more unusual. 
So unusual is, makes me think of z-score. Z-score tells me how unusual. So the first event is we have a score of 99 on a test when the average was only 70 with a standard deviation of 9. And then the z-score allows me to compare it to something that seems totally unrelated. A baseball player hits 60 home runs when the average was only 17.5, but the standard deviation was 10.1. So these two things feel totally unrelated, but we can figure out which one is kind of less likely to happen by calculating the z-score. So let's calculate the z-score for the exam. Um, we're going to do the data value, which is 99, minus the average divided by the standard deviation. And if you're going to use the calculator, you, you cannot type it all at once unless you add parentheses. So I rec you do 99 minus 70, enter, divide by 9. So 3.222, right? 99 minus 70 over 9 is incorrect. Notice I get a totally different number. If you do want to do everything at once, you can add parentheses on top or just do it in two steps. So by adding parentheses, you're telling the calculator to do the subtraction first. But if you hate parentheses, right, just do it in two steps. Enter, divide. So this is pretty unusual because it's more than three standard deviations. So three again, remember we got almost everything within three. So this is pretty unusual. But we wanna compare it to the baseball game, which is more unusual. So let's check out the baseball game. So for baseball, my data value is 60 for 60 home runs. Take away the average of 17.5 and divide by the standard deviation, right? Just using this formula up here. Again, you can type everything at once if you feel good, but you've got to add those parentheses. If you don't add the parentheses, you need to do it in two steps. So two different ways to type it on the calculator. And we get a z-score of 4.208, that's gonna round up. So which one's more unusual? Um, what did I say? I said unusual was farther, right? The more. So this would be more unusual because it's a larger z-score. I'm gonna say farther from zero because negative z-scores can also be considered unusual. So z-scores are considered a standardized variable um, because we're changing units from inches, pounds, whatever, home runs, percent maybe, um, to the number of standard deviations away from the mean. So it can have any units, right? The data can have any units, but the z-score actually has no units. Number of standard deviations away from the mean has no units. It's not a measurement anymore. So it's no longer in pounds, it's standardizing things. So it's basically converting these home runs and the scores into the same standardized form. And that's why we're able to compare them. Versus like 60 home runs is not comparable to 99 on an exam, right? They're just two totally different things. But the z-score makes them comparable. So let's summarize um, where my cutoff is for rare, um, because I talked about rare, but I didn't talk about the cutoff. So the cutoff ends up being two. So when the z-score is greater than two or less than negative two. And that's because most of the data is within two standard deviations. So let's look at that visually. Um, so zero is the middle. If we have zero, it means we actually have the mean. A z-score of zero is for the mean. And then we'll have one, two, and three. Negative one, 
negative 2, negative 3. So you can get negative z-scores. So earlier we said, what, 90 to 100% is within 2? So this is what we consider usual or normal. And then as we go out there, we call this unusual data or rare. And so both of those previous examples were unusual, right? Because they're past two. And how do we relate this to the original data? Um, we put the mean in the middle. And then if we add one standard deviation, that's mu plus sigma. Or we could do mu plus 2 sigma or mu plus 3 sigma. Uh, mu is the mean, so the mean plus a standard deviation, the mean plus 2, or the mean plus 3 standard deviations. And you'll notice the number in front matches the z-score. A 1 is invisible. And on the left side, we would just subtract. So that would be the subtraction version. So 1 minus sigma or mu minus sigma, mu minus two, right? Two standard deviations or three standard deviations. And same idea, the usuals in the middle, 90 to 100% is between two. And then anything beyond two is considered rare. So we can find it using those range of numbers that we did before, or now we can find z-score. All right, so we'll finish, we'll see the next example in the next video.